Hello and welcome to TEDCF Publishing's Solid Modeling Course for Autodesk Inventor 2012. This course shows you how professionals build solid models and along the way you'll learn tips and tricks that will help you speed up your work. Before we get started I'd like to show you what you'll see in the lessons. Lessons contain both metric and English units so that you can feel at ease using the unit type you typically use. When a lesson uses English units metric conversion notes will appear on the screen and when a lesson uses metric units English conversion notes appear. Another helpful tool is our lesson player. And before you watch your first lesson, I want to show you a few key commands. You can reposition a lesson at any point using the lesson slider. The slider button shows you the current position in the lesson, and if you click behind the button you can rewind the lesson to review. In fact, you can click anywhere on the slider bar to position the lesson anywhere you want. We also have the only lesson player that controls playback speed. Just click the speed slider bar to speed up or slow down the lesson. This truly gives you the power to watch lessons at your own pace. If you click any of the buttons except the reset button, the lesson you're currently watching pauses. And to continue watching a lesson, simply click the play button. The support button also has help on all the commands. Just click a help button to watch a lesson about the command. You can use this feature later, so for now I just want to show you the next button. Clicking this button advances you to the next lesson in the course, and now that you've finished watching the introduction, it's time to click it. Please click the next button to watch the first lesson in the Solid Modeling course. To get started, I'll give you a tour of some of the components on the Inventor window, and you'll set some of the application settings so that your screen will look the same as mine. The large area in the middle of the window is called the Graphics Area, and this is where you create parts and assemblies, so this is where most of the work is done. Just to the left of the graphics area is the browser. When you create parts and assemblies in the graphics area, you'll see the results of your work in the browser. You'll see how this works as you proceed through the course. Just above the graphics area and the browser is the ribbon, and just above the ribbon is the title bar. Everything you see in the Inventor window is called the Inventor User Interface. And this particular user interface is called a Ribbon User Interface because you use the ribbon to interface with Inventor. You'll learn about the commands in the ribbon later in the course. For now, I want you to change a couple of settings so that your user interface looks the same as mine. Click the Tools tab on the ribbon, and then click Application Options. This opens the Application Options dialog box, which is used to customize Inventor. Throughout our courses, you'll learn how to customize a lot of things, but when you want to customize the Inventor program, you need to open this dialog box. Click the Colors tab, and then change the color scheme to Presentation. Also change the background from Gradient to One Color. This makes the background in the graphics area white, and setting it to white will make it easier for you to see the details in the geometry we're going to be working on. When you're finished, click OK at the bottom of the dialog box. Usually when you start working with Inventor, the first thing you do is either open an existing file or create a new one. To do this, click the Getting Started tab, and then click the Open command. You'll learn about this dialog box and the New File dialog box in the next lesson. Now that you've reset the color scheme to Presentation, we're going to look at the features on the Open dialog box. This dialog box is similar to a standard Open dialog box you'll find in most programs. The look in window shows the default folder where files are stored. And the file selection window shows the files and subfolders in the default folder. At the bottom you can enter the file name. And just below the file name window is the file of types window. The first row displays all the Inventor file types. And the next five rows sets the display to a specific Inventor file type. You can also open other file types like AutoCAD drawings, IGES files and other translated files. We're going to leave the files of type window set to all the Inventor file types so that we can easily open any Inventor file. Just below the files of type window is the project window. This window shows that the current project is the default project. In the next lesson you'll create a project and you'll learn more about how to use this window. For now we're going to look at the types of files Inventor can create. If you look at the bottom left of the dialog box you can see the quick launch section. The new file command is in this section, and it's the same command as the new file command on the ribbon. You can click either of these commands to open the new file dialog box. 
Now if you look in the Quick Launch section, you can see that the Open command is available. If you click this command, the Open dialog box appears. So the Quick Launch section is used to toggle between the Open and New File dialog boxes. If you open the New File dialog box, you can see all the file templates used to create all the file types Inventor can create. And the Default tab shows the file types based on your installation of Inventor. If you selected the inch unit of measure during the installation, these templates use inches. And likewise, if you selected millimeters, the default templates use millimeters. This course uses the ANSI standard in both inches and millimeters. And as you saw in the introduction, metric and English conversion notes appear so that you can use whichever unit type you prefer. You can also use the English tab to create inventor files that use the inch unit of measure. And the metric tab has all the metric templates. The default tab on my system uses inches, so for now I'll be using inches, and if you're using millimeters you'll have to use the conversion notes, or you can use the templates in the English tab. Now let's talk about the templates. The standard part template has the extension IPT, which stands for Inventor Part. So this template is used to make a single part. The sheet metal template also has the extension IPT, so as you might have guessed, this template is used to create a single sheet metal part. The standard DWG template is used to create a two-dimensional AutoCAD drawing. And the standard IAM file is used to create assemblies. IAM stands for Inventor Assembly, and as you can see, there's also a Weldman Assembly template, but all you need to know at this time is IAM templates create assemblies. When you create your parts and assemblies, you can quickly create two-dimensional drawing files using the standard IDW template, which stands for Inventor Drawing. And the last template is used to create presentations like animated exploded views. IPN stands for Inventor Presentation. We'll use all the templates extensively throughout the courses, but before you use a template to create a file, you need to create a project. Projects control where your files are stored, so before you create a file, you need to specify where you want to store it. In the next lesson, you'll create a project, and then you'll be ready to create your first part. Now you're ready to create a new project, and before you create your first project, you need to specify the home folder for all your projects. To do this, close the New File dialog box, and then click the Tools tab, and open the Application Options. Now click the File tab. In the Projects folder window, you can see the default folder for your projects. This is the root folder for all your projects, and as you'll see later, a project file is simply a file that keeps track of the folders in the project. This folder will contain all the subfolders you'll use to store your parts and assemblies. One thing you might want to do is store your inventor files on a different hard drive on your computer, on a server, or on another computer. If you don't want to store your files on the same hard drive your operating system is located on, you might want to change the default now. I store my inventor files on my local F drive in a folder called Projects. All the files created in this course and our other Inventor courses will be stored in this folder. If you want to create a new location for your project, this is the time to do it. Otherwise, leave the project folder set to the default. When you're finished, click OK to apply your changes and close the dialog box. Now it's time to create your first project. The first step is to close all files. The Inventor window should look like this when all the files are closed. If you have open files, click the Inventor icon and then select Close to close all the open files. Now open the Projects dialog box. Click the Getting Started tab, and then click either the Open or New commands. Now click the Projects button. To create a new project, click the New button on the bottom of the dialog box. There are two types of projects you can create. The Autodesk Vault add-in has to be installed in order to use this option, and this course does not cover Autodesk Vault. Throughout the course, we'll use the Single User option, so select it, and then click the Next button. The first step is to name the project. The top window is where you enter the name of the project file, and the first project you're going to create is called Test. So enter Test in the window. The second window shows the location of the project file. If you modified the home folder for your project files, the path you gave it should appear in this window followed by the name of the project. This is the location where the project file will be stored, and it's where the files you create will be stored. 
The bottom window shows the full path and name of the project file. Notice that the project file has the extension IPJ. So what is a project file? As you'll see in just a minute, a project file keeps track of the files used in the project. For the test project, all the files created in the project will be stored in the test project folder. If this project needs to access files from other projects, the project file controls the accessibility of the files. Click the next button and you'll get a sense of what I mean. This window is where you add libraries to the project. Libraries can be parts like nuts, bolts, and screws, or they can be custom parts you make yourself. There are no libraries in either of the windows, so we can't add one now. But if we added one, the project file would keep track of it. Click the Finish button to create the project. Inventor has determined that the path for the file doesn't exist, and it asks if you want to create it. Click OK. Now the test project is highlighted, and to the right is the location of the project file. In the lower window, the first line shows the type of project it is. It's a single user project, which means that all the files you create will be stored in a single location. The second line shows the location of the project. Any file you create will be stored in the test subfolder of the projects folder. For this example, included files equals is blank because this line is used to include another project file. If you include another project file, the files from that project can be accessed from this project. We'll cover the other items later in the course, but for now I'd like to show you the options for keeping backup copies of your work. Old versions to keep is set to 1 by default, meaning that one copy of the previously saved version is stored on your computer. If you were to set this value to 2, the previously saved version and the version before that would be saved. If you have a reliable computer and network system, you may want to leave this setting set to 1. If you find that you're losing work for one reason or another, you may want to increase the number of backup copies you save. One thing to consider is the size of three-dimensional files can be large, and if you keep several copies of older versions, it can quickly use up your hard drive. Now let's talk about how a project works. When you open an assembly file or a presentation file, Inventor finds and opens the parts to create the assembly or presentation. It looks in the file location specified in the project file. The project you created will only look in the test subfolder since it's the only active path listed. Before you start the next lesson, delete the test project and then create another project called Accelerated Productivity. Right click on the test project and then select Delete. Now create the Accelerated Productivity project. Click the New button, use the Single User option, and then select Next. Enter Accelerated Productivity in the Name window. and confirm that the path is correct. The Accelerated Productivity Project folder should be in your default project folder. And as you can see, the Accelerated Productivity Project file will be stored in the project folder. When you're ready, click the Finish button.